this opportunity to give. I pray, God, you bless all those that were able to give tonight. I pray that it multiply meet every need of our church. Pour them out a blessing, God, that they cannot contain. We love you, Lord. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. You can be seated here tonight. God bless you. Amen. We just want to say welcome to our guests. We have Ricky and I want to say the Tara or Sarah. Tara, good to have you with us today. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Thank you for coming. Amen. We have a lot of people out tonight. We're thankful that you are here. Everybody that's here. Saints or guests alike. Amen. So because of the cancellation of the apartment place, like I said, if you can think of another apartment complex that we can contact or uh, we may just try to do something at the park. I don't know. I just found out today a couple hours ago. Uh, so just be in prayer about that. If you have ideas, please let us know because we do want to do something for the community with that. This is real quick as far as announcements go. Don't forget Sunday is one service at 11 o'clock. We are going to do an evangelistic service. Sunday school is going to take place during preaching. So bring your kids. It's going to be a great time in the Lord on Sunday. Next Friday, June the 1st, June the 2nd, and June the 3rd, we are having revival services with Brother Chris Leach. I just bought the plane ticket. He's on. He's, he's coming. Flying in Friday, flying out Monday. He's coming. He's excited. I'm telling you, we need to get a hold of as many people as we can to come to these services. God is going to do some great things, some miraculous things. I mean, miracles, deliverance, words of prophecy. I mean, God is going to do it all. So you don't want to miss any of these services. Friday night will be at 7.30 start time. Saturday will be at 7 o'clock start time. And Sunday, one service, just evangelistic with no Sunday school at 11 o'clock. So Friday night, 7.30, Saturday, 7, and Sunday at 11 o'clock. Amen. Psalm chapter 51, 57. We're going to read verse number 7. Amen. Psalms 57, beginning at verse number 7. The Bible says, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Amen. We want to be baptized, by the way, on Sunday. Brother Shane's going to get baptized on Sunday. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 57 and verse number 7, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. The last couple of weeks, God, I, I really in my prayers, I've been praying a lot. God, make sure that my heart is fixed. I want my heart fixed on you. What does that word fixed mean? If you look it up, it means to be established. It means to be stable. And it means to be securely determined. In order to understand the context of what's being said here, you need to realize what David was going through. If you read beginning at verse number 1 of Psalm chapter 57, even at the very beginning, before verse number 1, it gives like a, a preview of what is happening. And it says this is David writing when he fled from Saul into the cave. He starts off by saying, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusted in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up, Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Listen to what he says in verse number four. My soul is among lions. And I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, that thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves, Selah. Then he says, my heart is fixed, O oh God, my heart is fixed, and I will sing and give praise. That first six verses of Psalms chapter 57 really tells a lot of what David was going through. He tells them that he is a reproach. He tells them 
He tells God that he is among lions in verse number four. That he is among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are like spears and arrows. And their tongue a sharp sword. David was running for his life. The Israelites, the king was after him trying to take his life. There were people that were talking bad about him. No doubt in his mind that he thought he was facing the devil himself. My soul is among the lions. My, these teeth are of spears and arrows. Their tongue is as a sharp sword. David was at such a low point in his life that it would have been very easy for him while he was hiding in this cave to say, you know what? It's not worth my time. It's not worth my effort. I know that I was anointed king, but Saul has been chasing me ever since I've been anointed. People are talking bad about me. Rather than being in the palace as king, I'm sitting here in a cave running for my life. But in the midst of everything that was going wrong for David, in the midst of every bad word that was spoken against him, in the midst of every evil act that Saul tried to do to kill him, he pens in verse number 7, my heart is fixed, O oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. In other words, what he was saying was this, even though I feel like I'm surrounded by lions, and even though people are talking bad about me, and even though I'm not where I should be in my ministry, even though everything has fallen apart, I want you to know, O oh God, that my heart is fixed. In other words, my heart is established. My heart is stable. And my heart is securely determined. He said, no matter what I am going through, I am not going to throw in the towel. I am not going to give up. If I have to spend another year inside of this cave, I'm going to spend another year inside of this cave. Because I don't care what the enemy throws my way. My heart is stayed upon you. I'm securely determined to make it all the way home. My heart is fixed. I wish today that we could just get some people to say, my heart is fixed. I get tired of hearing people say they give up for one reason or another or how bad their life is. We need to, you don't understand what David was going through. His best friends turned their back on him. The king that supposedly loved him was throwing javelins at him and trying to kill him all the days it seemed like since he was anointed king. Everything that should have gone right for David ended up going wrong. If anybody had a right to give up, it was David. If anybody had a right to say, God, I'm throwing in the towel because I feel like I'm all alone and I feel like I'm abused and neglected, it was David. But he said, I could go through the lowest pits of hell, but God, I want you to know that I'm not going to give up on you. I know that if I'm faithful to you, that you're going to be faithful to me. God, my heart is I wonder what would begin to happen if we had a couple of people in this church that could say, God, my heart is fixed. No matter what I am going through, I'm not going to give up. I'm securely determined to make it all the way home. I want to have that testimony in my life. It says, God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Then he says in verse number eight, Awake up my glory. Awake, sultry, and heart. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. You see, before this, in the first six verses, it basically talked about how bad his life was and how the situation has gone so terrible. But when he penned those words, my heart is fixed. I am securely determined. I am stable. I am established. Once he penned those words, then he said, rather than sitting here in the mully grubs and rather than sitting here feeling sorry for myself and throwing himself a pity party, now that I know my heart is securely focused, and determined on God. Then he said, awake up my glory. Awake the sultry and the heart. You see, David was a man of praise. Everywhere he went, he praised God. He wrote at most of the book of Psalms. He was a singer. While he was in the presence of Saul, the Bible says when an evil spirit came upon Saul, that David would come and play his heart, and the evil spirits would depart from Saul. There was an anointing in David. 
shut 
the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take up Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. They knew that Daniel's heart was fixed, his mind was made up, and because he had that testimony, even though he found himself in the same predicament that David did, David was in a cave, and David said he felt like the mouths of lions were all around him. Daniel found himself in a cave, and he found himself with a bunch of lions all around him, but he didn't have to fear about the lions. He didn't have to fear how hungry they were, and he didn't have to fear the fact that he would be down there for one whole night, because he knew that as long as his heart was stayed on God, it doesn't matter how many lions are roaming after you, it doesn't matter how many people are talking bad about you, it doesn't matter how many demons of hell are trying to push against you, all that matters is your heart is fixed on God. If we could just get it in our minds that we need our minds made up, no matter what the devil throws our way, we are going to overcome. David said, I'm in a pit, I'm surrounded by lions. Daniel said, I'm in a pit, I'm surrounded by lions. But they both made it out. Both of them, the lions' mouths were shut. Both of them, they were able to walk out of the cave and fulfill a calling and a ministry that God had placed on their life. And the only reason they were able to do it was because their mind was made up and their heart was fixed. They were securely determined, just like the three Hebrew boys. They said, you know what, we're not going to bow before this idol, and we're not going to bow to your music. And God, he can deliver us. But if he doesn't, my heart is still fixed on God. If we get thrown into that fiery furnace, God can save us, but God can allow us to die. But either way, we're not going to bow to this thing, because my heart is fixed on God. We could change our world if we could get a body of believers to all understand that if we could get our mind made up that there's no devil in hell that can stop us. We could change the world if we all understood that if we said, if we gave no space to the devil, if we gave no place, nowhere in our mind should there ever be the thought of giving up. Nowhere in our mind should there ever be the thought of maybe I'm not going to go back to church. Nowhere And he goes and he's hanging out with God and said, hey man, what's going on? 
He said, hey, I'm just chilling on the earth, seeing what's up. And God says, hey, have you considered my servant Job? He's perfect. He's upright. He's a great guy. You should go check him out. That was like, all right, I'm going to go check him out. So he checks him out and finds out he's a great guy. He does everything right. But he said, that's because you have a hedge of protection. He said, just remove that hedge. And then he will curse you. So he removes the hedge. Everything that could go wrong for Job goes wrong for Job. Loses his family. Loses houses. Loses cattle. Loses servants. Pretty much everything worth anything in that time. Everything was gone. And all he found was one servant coming over this hillside saying, hey, all oh, your kids are dead. And some servant coming over this side was saying, hey, somebody came and took all your cattle and your donkeys and all that stuff, and I'm the only one that came back. Somebody's coming over this side saying, man, a whirlwind came and blew your house down. You ain't got nothing left. Everything that could have went wrong for Job went wrong for Job. And he could have blamed everybody else. And he could have said, it's your fault or your fault or any of this. He could have done everything. But what he said in Job chapter 1, verse number 21, he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gives, and the Lord can take away. But either way, blessed be the name of the Lord. His friends were telling him, curse God and die. His wife told him, curse God and die. What did you do wrong that brought us this plague? Just curse him to his face and accept the punishment and die. But Job said, you know what? I've had everything and I've lost everything. But through it all, my heart is still fixed on God. I'm not serving God for material possessions. I'm not serving God for my family. I'm serving God because he is great and he is greatly to be praised. I'm serving God because once I was lost, but he came down and he found me. I once was blind, but he healed my eyes and now I can see. I once was on my way to hell, but then he found me and pulled me out of the horrible pit. And now I am on my way to heaven. If he took every possession away from me, and if he took every family member away from me, yeah, I would be sad, but the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But either way, he's still worthy to be praised because my heart is fixed on you, oh God. I'm securely determined that I'm not going to give up no matter what the devil throws my way and no matter what God allows to take place in my life. I am not going to give up. My mind is made up. Job's mind was made up. The three Hebrew boys' his mind was made up. If you look throughout the Old Testament, even the New Testament, the story after story after story of people who could have given up, of people who could have thrown the towel, of people that could have turned their back on God, but yet in their heart they knew that they could not do such a thing because they knew that the worst day with God is better than the best day without God. They knew that life doesn't have any meaning unless they have the Lord Jesus Christ on their side. They knew that it didn't matter how good life was or how rich they became or how many wives they had. It didn't matter. All that mattered was they needed to be in the presence of God. All that mattered to them was they had to be on God's right hand. They had to have favor with God. It didn't matter what all they had to go through. All that mattered was their mind was stayed on me. In this day and age, it seems like everybody's out. The devil's out like crazy trying to get people to just throw the towel. One thing gets said. Somebody says something about somebody. Hurt feelings take place and they end up backsliding. They don't come back to church. If something crazy happens or life just gets so busy that all of a sudden we can't find ourselves coming into the house of the Lord. But we have to make God a priority. We have to make sure that we keep God number one in our life. He said the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You, we cannot allow anything else to be exalted above God. We cannot allow our hearts to be fixed on anything else but that of God. That doesn't mean you can't take care of your family. That doesn't mean you can't do some of those things because it's important for me as a husband and as a dad to make sure that my wife is taken care of and my kid is taken care of. But more important than my family, I've got to make sure that I am right with God. I've got to make sure that no matter what happens, that I teach my family that our heart is fixed. Fixed means it's not going to be moved. It cannot be broken. It cannot be deterred 
by anything else. I am established. I am fixed. I don't care how dark the valley gets. I don't care how dry the wilderness gets. I don't care what I have to go through. God, my heart is fixed on you. My heart is fixed. Let's all stand. My mind is made up. My heart is fixed. If we can get that in our mind, that our heart is fixed, and if we can begin to awaken praise, I'm telling you, your life will be transformed forever. Because when you praise God, there is no room for doubt. There is no room for disbelief. There is no room for hurt. Because when you praise God, part of praise is giving that stuff to the Lord. Laying it down at an altar. Or saying, God, I just can't take it anymore. I'm going to give it to you. Take all of my hurts and all of my pains and all of my disappointments and everything that I'm going through, Lord, I'm giving it to you. Part of praise is releasing that to God. And then God begins to fall down. And when the presence of God begins to fall down, a lot of you have experienced it. Man, you can just feel the love wrap hold of you. You can feel the encouragement begin to come into your mind and into your spirit. You can feel peace that passes understanding begin to flow in your life and in your heart. Because our heart is fixed and my mind is made up. It's a song that's popular today. Because if my walker sings it, I am sold out. My mind is made up. I am sold out. I am sold out to Jesus Christ. I am sold out to this ministry. I am sold out to this calling. I am sold out to be whatever God wants me to be. No matter what I have to go through, there's a fiery pit for me to go through a walk because my heart's fixed. If I have to find myself in a cave surrounded by lions, guess what? I've been there. I've been felt like I was all alone and people talking bad about me. I've been through it. I can tell you, it stinks. It's not any fun. But I'll tell you what, my heart was fixed. My mind was fixed. That God, I'm not leaving. I know I feel hurt. I feel rejected. Everything that could have gone wrong for a few months went wrong. But I'm telling you, my heart was fixed. I wouldn't be here today if my heart wasn't fixed. And you wouldn't be here today if your heart hadn't been fixed for all of these years. But all it takes is one moment of weakness. All it takes is one moment of letting that lie get into your heart or one lie get into your spirit. And everything begins to crash. Everything begins to crumble. While David was wallowing, wallowing around in self-pity, he finally came to himself and said, you know what? I don't care what I have to go through about my heart's fixed. As long as I have you, nothing else matters. Because I know he'll never leave me. He'll never pursue me. Just because you feel alone, you've got to understand you're not alone. The Spirit of God is always there. He's never left you. He's never abandoned you. But there are times that he may back off just a little bit to test you and to try you. To make you get just a little bit stronger. But at that moment of weakness, at that moment where you feel like you can't go on, all you got to do is whisper his name, Jesus. And guess what? He just comes right there and says, hey, I've been by you the whole time. Just like that footprint's call. We've all heard it. We've probably read it a thousand times. Jesus and this guy walking along the same together. You find that everything's cold. You're having a good time. Laughing, cutting up. But at that point, where things got rough, when he had the option, Things were just going bad in his life. And he looked back and said, man, at my worst points, all I see is one set of footprints. Poe says, it's when the Lord looks at him and says, it was at your worst moments. It wasn't that I left you, it was that I carried you. If your heart is fixed on God, your mind is made up, yeah, there's going to be times that you feel alone, but you got to realize you're not walking this walk by yourself. He's right there. He's going to pick you up. He's going to carry you in his arms and he's got to drag you and he's got to throw you in the fire and carry you, throw you over his shoulder and carry you, whatever he's got to do. He's going to get you to where you need to be. He's not going to let you burn. He's not going to let you be consumed by minds. He's not going to let you be consumed by people and their tongues. He's not going to let you be consumed by any devil or any demon or anything else that could come against you. And understand that I am persuaded. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Tribulations, 
distress, persecution, terror, sword, none of that stuff. He says, we're more than conquerors through him who loves us. We are more than conquerors. Can we just lift our hands? Can we just for a few moments just focus in on the Lord? Can we just make up our minds and make up our hearts and say, God, my heart is fixed. I know I'm fighting heaven. I know that I'm fighting this bad trial. I know I'm going through some bad things. But God, I'm going to make a commitment to you tonight that my heart is fixed. I'm fixed. I am securely determined. I am stable. And I am established. Nothing can sway me. I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. I want to have that testimony of Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The Lord gives, the Lord takes. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Would you come from front to this altar tonight? Can we come up to this altar and just begin to make a commitment to the Lord tonight? And say, God, I haven't really been fixed. I've been, my 